And I just had one of my clients reach out to me about these uh, events, which are called Aria events. And I've seen them advertised on Instagram as well. Um, they uh, seem very sleek, and that is why they would appeal to somebody, is that they just kind of seem like they're not even there. Um, but they were asking me about the performance of them. And so I would like to make sure that everybody is just clear on what is going on here. Um, this is, you can see how they look on the floor and everything, and that's really great um, that they are so pretty. Yay. But let's check uh, out the uh, performance here. Okay, so this is one of their sheets. And when you look at their list of, um, of uh, specs, you can see that they have uh, testing, currently in testing, currently in testing. So they don't have data on all this stuff. But we'll start here because this is actually a good way to look at this. They start at the bottom with a two by 10. That's the smallest one they make. Now, as the picture shows, these things are basically just a line, right? It's just the perimeter. And so what we've got here is the net free area or what they're calling here open free area. That is the actual amount of space that air can pass through this uh, grill into the room. And that's very important. So for a two by 10, which is 20 square inches on a normal vent, and really it's gonna be different depending on which manufacturer you're using, if they're metal, if they're made out of wood, etc. But for a two by 10, we've got 8.8 .8 square inches, less than half of the 20 square inches that this thing takes up. That's a good starting place to talk about. 2 by 12, it goes up by a couple inches. That's great. But then you can see 3 by 10, which is actually 30 square inches, supposedly. The number actually goes down. And as you can see, when we go up in size here, what happens is that the proportion of net free area to the size of the actual grill that you're buying is going down and down and down until we end up at an 8 by 8, which is 64 square inches, supposedly is only about 11 square inches. Uh, so a sixth of the entire grill is actually air space. Um, that, this is a major problem. And so um, what they have done here is to calculate their uh, velocities, their face velocities, the terminal velocity we'll, we're going to ignore for a minute, and the CFM here. Now, what you should know is that in residential settings, we aim for face velocities. If you read the ACA guides for this, and this is manual J, there's another manual called manual T, which is also just a manual for how to design residential HVAC systems. And the ideal velocity coming out of the face of one of these grills in a supply setting is going to be about 500 to 700 feet per minute. They're showing 800 to 2600 feet per minute in this chart. That is insanely high. Now, it might be that they are doing that so that the performance in CFM of these grills doesn't look as bad as it really will in, in real life um, because we're not going to run these grills at 2000 feet per minute as the salesperson from Aria told my client he might be doing. He's going to be running it at 500. So really what we're going to do is we're going to take this 800 number, cut it in half. So the CFM coming out of an 800 feet per minute, 4 by 10, which only has a, a net free area of about 9 square inches, is really going to be not 45, but 22 and a half is what we'll just, really all this stuff is, would be a curve, but we're not going to worry about that. Just imagine that. So if you're trying to get 100 CFM, you're going to need 5 of these grills, which are more expensive than the others. Now, he also asked me about the returns. So let's take a look at that real quick. The air returns, which look exactly like this. It's just the perimeter, right? The, the entire inside of the thing is going to be filled. The biggest return they have is a 10 by 30, which gives you only 67.4 square inches. 10 by 30 is 300. So 67.4 divided by 300 is about, uh, oops, 67.4 divided by 300, not times 300, is about 22% net free area. This is, uh, normally you're looking at like 60% to 80%, somewhere in that range for a metal grill. 
and the nice wood grills. Like there's a company that I used on my own uh, home called Stellar Air Vents. Um, you can see that video. I'll, I'll link it on screen here. But but this is a very low net free area. And essentially what we're trying to do is with a return, you want the air velocity to be even lower than on a supply. So where on a supply, Aria thinks we might be looking at somewhere between 800 and 2600 feet per minute, which is not right. We're really looking between 500 and 700. On a return, you want it to be about 250 feet per minute because number one, you don't want to restrict the return. You want it to be as easy as possible, number one. Number two, you don't want it to hiss. Uh, which is one of the byproducts of making it difficult. So if we want our returns to not make any noise, 250 feet per minute is good. In order for him to get his 640, he's got something like a, uh, it sounds like a two and a half, uh, three and a half ton system on his house, which has about 1400 CFM. So he's got like a 650 uh, CFM return on one floor and a 750 CFM return on the other floor. And it turned out I'll, I'll spare you the calculations, but suffice it to say, you can use something like this right here, which is at engineering.com, um, to calculate this. To get a 744 CFM flow and to keep the feet per minute below 250, where we want it, you have to use a rectangular duct of 20 by 22 inches. That's 440 square inches. And we take 440 and we divide it by the net free area on this thing um, which is the, let's see here, we'll just use the dry roll pro return, which is 10 by 30, but it's only got 67.4. So we divide 67.4 into 440. And we have to use seven of these returns in order to get that 744 CFM to perform at the velocity that we want. And uh, it's, we're going to ignore this. Um, they're, they're on multiple continents, it looks like. But uh, suffice to say, $140, uh, it looks like Canadian is what we're looking at here. But like these things are real expensive and they do not move air very well. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew how to read these performance charts because this is important if you're shopping for this stuff. If you want to use this, great. But you're going to need, he, he needed uh, 13 of these return grills in order to get his um, approximately 1500 CFM out of the system, 1400, 1500 CFM. Um, so I hope that this has helped you. Please remember to uh, read your data, look at charts like this, understand what CFM means, understand what velocity means. How do you do that? You subscribe to this channel, you look at other channels on uh, home performance and the science of homes. Please do check out the other videos on this channel on this topic if you're interested. Uh, like and subscribe, comment below if you have other things to add or other brands that you'd like for, for us to talk about. Tune in next time.